Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowbeck. Today we are going to do Unit 3, Lesson 3. It's on isosceles triangles and equilateral triangles. Before we start, this first part isn't on your sheet, but I wanted to show you this. The shortest side of every triangle is always across from the smallest angle. So imagine your smallest angle here is 34 degrees. If you go across your triangle, this will be your shortest side. So your short side would be segment AC or side AC. On the flip side, your biggest side will be across from your biggest angle. So here's our biggest angle, 78. And if we go across the triangle, that will be our longest side. So side BC is the longest in this triangle. That is true for every triangle. The smallest angle is across from the shortest side. The largest angle is across from the longest side. Here's some vocabulary regarding isosceles triangles. Remember an isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. Technically, the mathematical definition says two or more congruent sides, but we just go with two because if it has more than two congruent sides, we call it equilateral. So in an isosceles triangle, the legs are the two congruent sides. And so you can see here this leg and this leg, those are the two congruent sides. The other side, which is not equal to those, is called the base, and the base would be down here. It's not always on the bottom, it's just the side that's not congruent to the other two. We also have base angles, which touch the base, and then we have a vertex angle, which is up at the top or where the two congruent sides meet. The isosceles triangle theorem states this, if you have two equal sides in a triangle, two sides congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. So if you look at our triangle over on the right, we have these two tick marks here. If we go across from those tick marks, we have angle two and angle one. They must also be congruent. So if side AC is congruent to side BC, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. The converse is also true. It basically says if you have two equal angles, you're going to have two equal sides. So if I go across from this angle and across from this angle, these two sides would, be have, would have to be congruent or equal to each other because we have two congruent angles. Those little red curves mean that they're the same size. So if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then side DE would be congruent to side FE. So this one says find PN, which means the distance from P to N. So we're looking for this distance over here, highlighted in red. What I've noticed is that angle P and angle M have little red curves. And if I go across from angle P, I get to this side, um, MN. And if I go across from this red curve, I get to side PM, which means these two sides must be the same length. So 11 centimeters is your answer. So please pause the video and try number three. See if you can solve this for Z. When you're done, unpause the video. So what I notice here is the 2Z minus 15 should equal the 9. Because we have two equal sides, or two equal angles, we should have two equal sides. We will not use the 7 for this problem. It's extra information. Add your 15. You have 2z equals 24. Divide by 2. z equals 12. For every equilateral triangle, it's also going to be equiangular. And so that means if you have three equal sides, you have three equal angles. Well, we know the angles in every single triangle add up to 180 degrees. 
So if we divide that evenly by three, what happens is we get 60 degrees. Each angle in an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. 60, 60, 60. <clears throat> So on this problem, it says find the measure of angle R, angle P, and the distance from P to R. The first thing I notice is I have 5 centimeters and 5 centimeters, two equal sides. So if I go across, angle P and angle R should be equal. Now this other angle, angle Q, is 60. So if I start out by doing 180 minus 60, I have 120 degrees left for the other two angles. But they're the same size. And so we have to take 120 and break it into two equal parts, which is 60. 120 divided by 2 is 60. So look what happens. Each of the angles is actually 60 degrees. Angle R is 60, angle P is 60, angle Q is also 60. If all three angles are the same, then all three sides will be the same. And so PR would have to be 5 centimeters, just like the other two sides. Let's try number 4. Find the values of X and Y. So again, I see those two red tick marks. So here's one and here's one. That means if I go across from them, angle B and angle C. So here's angle B, here's angle C. Those two should be the same size. Well, if angle B is 2x, that means I can say angle C is 2x. But if you notice, angle A is also 2x. So all three angles are the same which means all three angles are going to be 60 degrees each. Divide by 2, x equals 30. To find y, what I would probably do is use this side bc. It's going to be congruent to all of the sides because if all three angles are equal, all three sides will be equal. And so what I decided to do is 4y minus 5 equals 3. This side is going to equal this side because all three sides will actually be the same. Add 5. 4y equals 8. Divide by 4. y equals 2. Okay, let's try number five. Notice the tick marks. I think what I have learned is that this side and this side are congruent because they have those tick marks. So I can start by doing 4y minus 2 equals 2y plus 2. Those two sides are equal to each other. Now I can solve for y. So minus your 2y, you're going to have 2y minus 2 equals 2. Add 2. 2y equals 4. Divide by 2. y equals 2. But we also have to find x. And so I notice an 80 degree angle right up here at the top, 80 degrees. Well, the three angles in every triangle add up to 180. So if I go 180 minus 80, I'm left with 100 degrees. So between these bottom two angles, it's going to be 100 degrees. But since we have a tick mark and a tick mark, those two corners have to be equal. And so if we take 100 and divide it equally in half, it means each of these corners is 50 and 50. Ha ha! 6x plus 8 must equal 50. So the three corners add up to 180, do 180 minus the 80, you get 100, and then divide the 100 in half and you get 50 for each of those other angles. Subtract 8, 6x equals 42, divide by 6, x equals 7. 
So at this point, please try Unit 3, Practice 3. If you get stuck or have questions, just send me a Schoology message. Uh, thanks a lot, you guys. Have a great night.